In this video we're going to look at taxonomy. We're going to cover what taxonomy is, the reason for classifying organs, selection criteria for classification, as well as keys as a tool to classifying organisms. So firstly, what is taxonomy? Taxonomy is a branch of science, so it's a study of science, and it's the study involved in classifying things into groups and naming those groups as well as the organisms within the groups. And those groups that things are classified into are referred to as taxa. So taxonomy being the study of groups or taxa. There's a few different reasons that we have for classifying organisms. And firstly is to provide some sort of order to our understanding of the different animals around us and relationships between those animals. There's an estimated 8.7 million different types of life on the planet. So without some sort of system, uh, we wouldn't be able to work out all the different ones and we wouldn't be able to communicate about the different animals to each other. So we need to group them to provide order for ease of use. Another reason that we classify things is to make it easier to describe organisms to scientists in another place that might not necessarily have the organism in front of them. So therefore, rather than having to describe all the properties of that organism, we can say that it's in a particular taxa and therefore has all the properties of that taxa. So for example, if we're talking about birds and I say, oh, it's a blackbird, uh, you know that it's a bird, so therefore it's going to have a beak and wings and lay eggs. So I don't have to say all those things just by saying bird, uh, it, all those characteristics are implied. An example of this is the tomato, or what we commonly call the tomato, was once called the Solanum coal in Hermi Herbaco Folis Pinatus Incisus, or the Solanum with the smooth stem which is herbaceous and has incised pinnate leaves. So they see they're describing a whole heap of the characteristics of that plant uh, where they're not necessary if it's grouped uh, correctly. Another thing that makes describing things easier is that by having a classification system and a scientific name, it provides one name for all people around the world, or in particular scientists around the world, to use when talking about a particular thing. So that what we, the common name that we use today is tomato, uh, but some of the common names uh, around the time that the classification, current classification system was adopted uh, is the apple of the moors, the golden apple, and the love apple. So by having one name, and the name is the Solanum locusburkicum, uh, by having that name, uh, we're able to have everybody talking about the same organism. And the classification also helps us show relationships between those organisms. So as we talked about the common names, those older common names for the tomato before, uh, before we came up with the name Solanum lycopersicum, uh, those names of all were talking about apples, when tomatoes aren't actually related to apples. They look a bit like apples, but they're not related to apples. T tomatoes are actually more closely related to the Solanum tuperbosum or the potato. So you can see in the classification system that these names are similar because they are more closely related. Once you decide to classify things, you need to work out the selection criteria by which you're going to classify them. So one of the easiest ways to classify things is through anatomy. Anatomy is the physical structure of an organism or the things that you can actually see on the organism. So for example, if we were to create a group or taxa for birds, uh, some of the anatomy th of that group is that they're egg laying, they have feathers, their wings, and they have a beak and they are animals. Another thing you can look at is physiology or the way that something functions on a cellular level. So for example we could look at ectotherms or cold-blooded animals uh, and in this group we would have turtles, worms and butterflies or cold-blooded animals. Another way that we're able to classify organisms is by how they behave. Now, 
Classifying things by behaviour is a little bit tricky because generally when we're classifying things, somebody goes out into the field, sees something that they haven't seen before, they capture it and kill it, mount it and bring it into the lab to be classified. So therefore, classifying by behaviour can be a little bit tricky. However, uh, if we were to classify by, say, the ability to fly, we could have the albatross, the bat, and the butterfly all in the one group. Now keys are something that we use to help us classify organisms. And what they do is they help the user to easily identify organisms and the groups that organisms are found in. When making a key, if there's two options at each step, this is a dichotomous key or called dichotomous key, uh, however, if there's many options, it's called a polychotomous key or sometimes a branching key. So there's a few different types of keys that we can use to aid us in classifying organisms and identifying once they're classified. In this video, we've looked at taxonomy, the branch of science concerned with classifying, naming and naming organisms into taxa. We've looked at the reasons for classification in providing order or structure to our understanding of organisms, as well as providing ease of description between scientists. So everyone's naming the same organism, the same thing, and knows the properties of that organism without having to describe them every time they talk about them. Or as well as showing relationships between different organisms. Uh, we've also looked at some of the selection criteria that can be used, for example, anatomy, physiology, or behavior of an organism, as well as keys as an aid to classifying organisms.